Live from Nice, France, it's theCUBE. Covering .next Conference 2017 Europe. Brought to you by Nutanix. And we're back. I'm Stu Miniman and you're watching theCUBE. Happy to welcome to the program first time guest, Christian Peterson, who's the CEO, founder of Zentura, a service provider uh, based in Denmark. Christian, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. All right, so tell us a little bit about, you know, what led you to create uh, the, the, the company, a little bit about your background, and then we'll get into it. Yeah. My background is uh, from Citrix. I'm a Citrix consultant uh, from back from the, the ages with the uh, Winframe and all the, the old stuff. Um, and in 2006, I founded Centura uh, with a focus on Citrix uh, consulting services and all the all the stuff around Citrix. And quite fast, uh, we saw the trend in the market to to become a service provider. So we started up with uh, some of our on-prem customers and moved them into a traditional uh, hosting virtualization platform. Yeah, so, so did you start as hosting? Were there certain just Citrix services that you, that you were offering uh, to your customers? Walk us through kind of that uh, that progression. Yeah, our, produ our product is uh, something we call Business Cloud. It's a, it's a branded uh, Citrix platform and it's a full service uh, platform for our customers. So everything is around Citrix. Uh, the connectivity to our platform is uh, Citrix based, uh, yeah. Okay, um, and how how big do you have multiple data centers? How many customers do you have? Give us some of the speed and feeds. We have uh, two data centers and uh, we have roughly 3,000 uh, people connecting into our site on, on, uh, on some yeah, customers. Uh, we are mainly focusing on legal and uh, accounting customers uh, with special demands for 24-7, uh, yeah. Okay, and all your customers are in Denmark, correct? All of our customers are in Denmark. Some of them uh, have branch offices in the UK and in Germany, uh, and one in Russia. Okay, um, so what, why don't you bring us up to speed as to, you know, when did you start looking at Nutanix? What led you uh, kind of down that path? I'd like to understand a little bit about kind of the, the yeah. problem statement, the criteria, what yeah. led to that, yeah. yeah. Uh, in the beginning, uh, as we were Citrix uh, house, and then uh, of course we started with SendServer. That made really good sense uh, for us because it was a Citrix product. Uh, and quite fast, it, it became really complex. Uh, and and the development of our platform uh, was uh, quite fragmented uh, over the years. Um, so we really needed to I've seen Nutanix uh, at Synergy uh, from the beginning, and I, I saw on the keynote where Mark Templeton roll in uh, a block uh, of Nutanix uh, notes uh, just uh, doing VDI, and I says, okay, this is VDI. And what really was a huge game changer for me was uh, when Nutanix introduced AHV, because I really liked uh, many of the concepts about putting the whole stack into into the cluster you don't have you don't rely on external management you don't rely on that many components you don't have a sql as a backend we were evaluating a lot of stuff uh, a lot of products how how we could simplify our, our current environment because we had huge issues yeah so your citrix uh, client were you running zen before or what what what, what was your environment before our existing uh, environment was a mix uh, we had uh, eight clusters uh, some of them on zen uh, different versions because the upgrade path it was a pain uh, it required a lot of downtime and we only security patched and, uh, and critical patches. We didn't do major release upgrades because we have so many issues with it. A and um, some years before we introduced Nutanix, we switched uh, half of our stack to VMware okay. because that solves some of our issues because they have a, a good way of handling and migrating data ins inside their own uh, platform. But quite fast, the cost became an issue for us because sure. the cost is, is, as a service provider, it's of course you just pay in bits and you pay per usage, but still the cost was just going sky high. Right. Okay. Uh, so it was AHV. Was that was that the <coughs> catalyst to, to get you uh, to Nutanix? Then exactly. AHV. It wasn't kind of a hyper converged, or it definitely wasn't VDI. Oh, the it thought. I, like I'm I'm yeah. I'm quite old uh, yeah. in the, in this uh, field, and I really like the idea of having a SAN and all things. And I I, I was not easy to convince that it wasn't a, uh, this wasn't a good idea. Yeah. yeah Just like in the past, when you know when people were switching from regular computers to a SAN, everybody says, "Oh, I want my data on my computer." Y yeah. Trust me, I, I worked on a lot yeah. of the, the early 
early sand stuff exactly. rolled that out. At Wikibon, we actually created the term server sand, yeah. which was all of the functionality and things that you loved in it's a sand, we're just going to do it on the server is really what that exactly. is, as opposed to Nutanix started out, oh, there's no sand. I'm like, no, 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 you're going to scare off all uh, the people exactly. that, 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 that used it. Uh, um, that was also my, my biggest <laughs> concern. Uh, it really was. But when Nutanix uh, started uh, with the VMware, we, we did a business case on it and it wasn't feasible because we still had the VMware licensing cost and uh, also now we have the Nutanix licensing cost and it was it was not easy to create a business case because the customers, they, they don't care uh, what we put uh, underneath because they only look on cost uh, and if I add something to my, uh, my stack, then I only add some cost and Maybe I can do something a bit more efficient, but that's it. Okay, so have you swept the floor now, EHV everywhere, or yeah. you know what? what we, what's, we, what's we did that? a full turn. We did a full turn for replacing everything, all legacy. We did a inside our business. We did a, a survey uh, with all our employees and said, okay, instead of doing just the business case bit by bit and yeah, you know how you do normally and uh, to compare licensing cost and all that, we said, okay, we want everything in this business case. Not only products. So all the consultants uh, went up with the, the main issues were all the complexity because it was not easy. We had, we had people on network, we had people on storage. So so you all always had to ask another one if you want to provision something, and the sales guys need to go to to the tech guys to say, okay, do we have enough storage for this? And what about the IOs? And yeah, there was a lot of issues with this, and also working at night and all the change windows and doing uh, all the storage teachers moving workloads because customers were unsatisfied on this platform, we can move it to the new platform. We had so many issues with this. So we actually ended up just, we, we discussed internally, says okay, if we're going to do this, then we're going to do it 100%. It's not just, not just putting Nutanix on side and move something. So internally in the board we discussed and it says okay, it's it's now or never because this is gonna be our window of opportunity to grow and expand. Um, so we, we discussed and we agreed on a total replace, everything, network uh, is everything. So we switched all our existing infrastructure and migrated all the legacy workloads onto Nutanix <laughs> in a four to six months uh, time frame. And we didn't have extract at that time, so it was quite manually. Yeah, yeah. so uh, obviously you're here, so so it went okay. <coughs> but, you know, t take us through, what, what did you learn, you know, four to six months is, you know, not a short period of time, so, you know, looking back, what lessons learned, what would you <coughs> recommend to your peers to, you know, make things even better if, uh, uh, what would you change if, uh, if you had to go back? Uh, what I would change, uh, uh, that I didn't do it before, <laughs> because yeah. it, it would have made sense. Actually, we had we had quite new equipment. Uh, we just bought a new sand one year before that. Yeah. Uh, it, was, it wasn't even old. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that was an issue. Mm -hmm. But the cost of, uh, of the existing, even though we had bought it, the cost was getting too high. Yeah. We were using too many hours on maintaining this. Yeah, so and the, the, old, the, the best time to do this would have been a year ago, but the exactly. second best time is to do it now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, don't push it off for another year. Exactly, right? exactly. <laughs> uh, um, and and what? Um, yeah, th that was uh, that was. We should have done it before. Okay. Uh, but I, I don't think Nutanix was mature for this at the moment. Uh, but now, one year before this, I yeah, was actually I convinced. So, you know. AHV, you know, there's, a, I think they're approaching about a third of customers are using yeah, AHV yeah, yeah. now. Um, you said it's mature now, you're happy with it. What, you know, what more do you want to see out of AHV? Uh, you know, wh where would you like to see them continue to, uh, you know, <coughs> add features of maturity? Yeah, as a service provider, uh, of course, uh, AHV have some limitations compared to all of the other stacks because multi-tendency is, is, is a big requirement uh, for a service provider. But we have we have taken it kind of another approach to it because they have they have all the APIs so we can just do it ourselves. We have all the APIs exposed. Right now we are working on a on a billing model because in our business case it was it was not only IT it was also the, the management and all the accounting right. and all the other things. If we can optimize those, the whole business case would look even better. Right. Uh, so we're working on a model where the system automatically bills the customers and everything, sends status reports to the customers, so before they get an invoice, they know if they want to change something. Because our solution right now is, is fully managed. So it's fully managed from, from our side, because 
we have some issues with the multi-tendency okay. stuff. And, and what, what, what management stack are you using today? Is it in-house or uh, you know what, what are you using? What? Management stack? Are you management stack, uh, in-house, yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah. Pr pretty typical for a service provider. It is, yeah. Um, yeah, is it, it, have you looked at his, uh, some of the management tools from Nutanix yeah, yeah, yeah. or, you know? I'm paying a lot of attention on, on Calm. <laughs> yeah. Because it really makes really, really good sense for us. Okay. Yeah. Um, what, when will, what, what does it need for, it to, for you to be able to consider it even further? Um, I need to play with it. I need yeah. to, to try it out. Uh, I've only seen some, some sessions. I also saw it uh, last year and I've been following it closely. Yeah. Uh, but from, from a slide to getting in production, the, it takes some time, and I, and I really need to play with it. I, it looks, it looks really yeah, amazing. I mean, most service providers have spent the time kind of building their stack, so exactly. you know, going from I, I've, I've got it to, exactly. to <laughs> that is, is but, challenging. But so. now we're really moving, and we can see we can see how much time we use on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, I think we cut we cut the time. Uh, one tenth to one tenth of what we, we did before. We had a lot of things. For, uh, for you're saying for managing yeah, infrastructure? Yeah, for managing infrastructure and doing changes because if you, if you have a really fragmented uh, solution, then you have a lot of people you need to involve because he knows best about this cluster and all the differences in this cluster. And that was also one of the, the biggest pains. And also the, the Nutanix strategy to just, this is, as I said to all the employees, this is the final migration we are going to do ever because now it's ribbon replace right. and now we can see in the past we used uh, the senior consultants for expanding clusters and adding new clusters and doing network and doing a lot of stuff right now we moved uh, it down in the chain and so it, it's a regular support guy he can he can put in a note right now and he can do the expand of the cluster we, we do it in a regular service window now it's not an extraordinary service window nothing all right so christian you're so happy with the Titanix. you're not only a customer you're also a channel partner exactly what led to that you know what what services were you already offering for there and what what led to you look uh, to to move down that path uh, <coughs> we saw a lot of synergies because we we could also we could extend the enterprises and, and their use cases. Uh, we had Nutanix and if we could sell Nutanix to some of our customers, maybe we could do some replication and DR for our customers as a service. Uh, now Nutanix, of course, is, is moving towards uh, XI, but that's our idea. And, and we also we already have some customers signed up, uh, signed up for disaster recovery as a service on our AHV plat platform. And that made really good sense. And also, we did a lot of work in uh, in certifying all our employees, mm -hmm. uh, and why don't we we have we have spare time now? Why don't we use our knowledge and sell this product? It, it makes really good sense. And what I really also like about Nutanix is th there's not a one size fit all because everybody needs somebody can go pri public and somebody go private. And we had a lot of enterprise Citrix customers because we have. A small part of our, our company also do Citrix consulting because that's our background. So we had a lot of potential customers there. Yeah, so we, I've watched over the last five years, there was a real tug back and forth between VMware and their service providers. They yeah. tried to, you know, is vCloud Air, you're going to be a great partner, oh wait, you know, we're going to do it ourselves. Yeah, yeah, wait, yeah. we're going to do partner program, oh wait, you know, Amazon and a couple of big ones are there. How, how's Nutanix as a partner for service providers? You mentioned Xi, um, is that something they'll partner with you on or is that something that they're competitive on? Definitely, and, definitely. And how do they, uh, how do you look at that? Because the main difference between, uh, <coughs> if you see all the other cloud providers and if you see VMware, and the other providers, this is this is one stack. It's still the same. It's still the same, uh, and you, you're not gonna have to create a lot of stuff to adopt this. It can be quite easy for us. We also see. I see it as a possibility for us to, to of course sell this. Why, why we can be a reseller? We can just have one account, and we can provision the customers' uh, VMs in the cloud. So it 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 creates. Uh, it sets us in a very better, much better position than we were uh, before. Because if, if we team up with uh, Asia or some of the other uh, public cloud providers, we are not in control anymore. And, and it really, you can't, it, it's easy to deploy and it's easy to work with if you know how to do it. But it's, it's not that easy. Uh, yeah. All right, well, Christian Peterson, really appreciate you sharing with us everything that you're doing at Zentura yeah. and your customers. Love, love to hear the insight into Denmark and what's happening there. I'm Stu Miniman. We'll be back with lots more coverage here from Nutanix.next 2017 in Nice, France. You're watching theCUBE.